Hello, this is Brian from PASC. The name of this web tutorial is Understanding the Activity Conflict Report. This tutorial is geared towards Sonic staff, but the general flow is similar for all Compass programs. The goal of this tutorial is to explain the Activity Conflict Report, which is a key tool for reviewing activity schedules and their rosters for accuracy. What exactly is an activity conflict report? I'm glad you asked. By definition, an activity conflict occurs when a participant is on the roster of two or more activities that are scheduled for some or all of the same time. Activity conflicts can cause numerous issues within DYCD Online for attendance entry and often signal inaccurate record keeping at the site level. The Activity Conflict Report is a helpful tool to avoid both of these outcomes. I'm going to start by going over the report and conclude with some suggestions on how to remove conflicts. Let's look at the report. It is located under the Reports tab in the Activity and Group Report section. In my experience, running the report for a full program period generates a chaotic mess. What I suggest is running the report for a custom date range for one normal week without any unique activities or holidays. A regular five day week of programming, if you will. Running the report this way will tell you all the activity conflicts on a normal week. Most of the time, activity conflicts are reoccurring, meaning that if they happen this week, chances are they will happen every week. The report is organized by participant. Each activity conflict is presented side by side. Identifying info for each activity is also presented. Each line represents a unique activity conflict. For example, if Jane Smith is on the activity roster for volleyball from 3.30 to 4.30 on Tuesday and basketball, from 3.30 to 4.30 on Tuesday, that's considered an activity conflict. Activity conflicts can also occur if a participant's activities cross over one another. For instance, if Joe Travis is scheduled for snack from 3 to 3.30 on Fridays, as well as homework help from 3.15 to 4.30, this is an activity conflict as well. As the participant schedule overlaps from 3.15 to 3.30. All an activity conflict means is that a participant is on multiple activity rosters at the same time. Accidental activity conflicts should be cleaned up as each conflict will lead to a red C appearing in attendance entry as soon as the participant is marked present for one of the multiple activities they are on the roster for. The Red Sea prevents duplicate attendance that leads to inflated ROP. However, the Red Sea isn't a cure-all as programs with activity conflicts will find taking attendance challenging. The way to remove the Red Sea is to solve the root problem, the activity conflicts. The key to cleaning up activity conflicts is figuring out if the conflict occurs due to an error in the activity schedule or an error in the activities roster. If it's an error in scheduling, say for instance volleyball runs from 4.30 to 5.30 instead of the 3.30 to 4.30 listed in DYCD Online, the solution is to change the activity schedule to mirror the programming on site. If it's an error in the roster, meaning that Jane actually only attends volleyball, but never basketball, then the solution is to remove or set an end date for the participant in the roster of the activity he or she does not attend. This will remove the conflict from the next day forward or altogether if deleted from the roster. Whether attendance was taken for the activities is a key question to ask when working with activity conflicts. 
Activity rosters and schedules cannot be modified at the program level for dates that attendance has already been taken. Therefore, my suggestion is to run the activity conflict report prior to starting to take attendance in September and after every change to activity schedules and rosters in order to catch mistakes and remove conflicts prior to attendance going into the system. To recap, this web tutorial aims to define what an activity conflict is, provide guidance on how to run and interpret the activity conflicts report, and suggestions for how to clean up activity conflicts to ensure accurate record keeping. This concludes my web tutorial on understanding the activity conflict report. Thank you for watching my video.